welcome all to uh, weekly Wednesday Sangha in Iskona Bergen County. So today we'll be continuing with our Vaishnava etiquette session. So till now we have covered three sessions. Uh, today we are continuing with part four that is dealing with different kinds of devotees, which is another important topic for us to follow. Uh, before starting, whatever I'll be saying is based upon what we have got in the manual Vaishnava etiquette, which is not for someone. Uh, all points will be shared as per those books. If I make any mistakes, please forgive me and displace me so I'll be able to speak something for my own purification. Let me know once you're able to see my screen. Yes, bro. Yes. If a setting comes a short press, Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prestaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta, Swamini Tinamine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, Pascha Tadesha Tarine, Vancha Kalpataru Vescha, Kripa Sindhu Vecha, Patita Nam Pavani Pio, Vishnu Vibhio Namunamo. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna So the topic which we'll be discussing today is more or on dealing with different kind of uh, devotees. So before going to that, we need to understand first what this devotee term means. So when you just Google devotee, so there are multiple things which comes, pops up. And one interesting thing find, like is there uh, the common point between between all the links says like a devotee is one who is, who is doing bhakti or some spirituality. And for the same, Srila Rupa Goswami, who is our Acharya. So there are six Goswamis in our parampara. And out of this, the Rupa Goswami, under which parampara we are there. So he has instructed the definition of devotee in Nectar of Instruction. And he says, one should mentally honor who chants the holy name of Lord Krishna. So how to recognize a devotee? So first is like a devotee is the one who is chanting or taking name of Lord Krishna. Second, one should offer humble obeisance to the devotee who has undergone spiritual initiation. Spiritual initiation is nothing but taking shelter of Guru, accepting Guru or Diksha. And third is associate and faithfully serve a pure devotee who is advanced in undeviated devotional service and whose heart is completely devoid of proper to criticize others. So these are basically qualities of a devotee. And then Rupa Goswami Pad, he is instructing us to worship such kind of devotee. So in whole of this session, we will discuss on what different types of devotees as the topic is dealing with different kinds of devotees. So we have different devotees like we have Guru, uh, we have Shiksha Guru, Diksha Guru, and we have uh, other devotees. So we'll discuss one by one on this point. And uh, here we see like uh, the Vaishnavas, they are most merciful for us. And uh, then we have senior Vaishnavas, we have junior Vaishnavas. So senior Vaishnavas are one where junior respects and junior Vaishnava always expects or receives blessings from the seniors. One should always remember that his business is to become more humble than a blade of a grass. So in Chaitanya Shikshashtakam, so Shikshashtakam is nothing but eight prayers, which Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is not different from Radha and Krishna, who is appeared in Kali Yuga. So Radha Krishna, when appeared in form of Kali Yuga, in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has written eight verses of Shikshashtakam and there, there is very beautiful verse which says, Trinadapi Sunichena, Tararapi Sahishnuna, Amanina Manadena, Kirtaniya Sadhari. He says, a devotee should be more humble than a blade of a grass. He should be very much tolerant. Like we can see example of a tree. So even though it's a summer or winter, whatever tree is still standing still. So he's always tolerant. So we should be tolerant like a tree. And we should never desire any respect from anyone else. Rather, we should respect everyone else. So these are basic qualities of a devotee. Now, in Vaishnava philosophy or Vaishnava parampara, there are different 
levels or there are different kind of devotees where respect starts with. So the very first one where we need to respect is our spiritual master because he is the one who is taking us back to Godhead or he is giving us Gyan, Chakshu Gyan of Krishna. So can I request Saurabh Prabhu to read this? Just give me a second. Yeah. Uh, dealing with different kinds of devotees, uh, dealing with a spiritual master. Uh, first point is one should humble oneself submissively and render service to the spiritual master. Second one is one should take the orders of the guru as one's life and soul. In the presence of guru, uh, one should not instruct others without receiving his permissions. One should imply, uh, simply uh, obey the instructions of the Guru and should not question. One should never instruct one's own Guru. One should never argue with one's spiritual master. One should never present one's qualification to the Guru and should always remain in very humble position. Uh, one should never sit on the same level as the spiritual master unless one receives the permission. If a spiritual master inquires, we should humble and in submissive frame of mind, we should respect we should report to what's accomplished by his mercy. Thank you. So, why first of all we take initiation? Because we need someone to show us the real path. And that term in English is known as spiritual master or guru. And the guru is one who is giving us ultimate knowledge. Now, he is so much senior that he is giving us knowledge. So, this is all basic rules or dealings which we should follow. So basically, whenever we are surrendering to Guru, whenever we are taking Diksha from the Guru, that means we are completely surrendering to Him. So for example, for Draupadi, we can see that Draupadi was trying to take help from Pandavas, but no one was able to help and then she totally surrendered to Krishna and Krishna came. So similarly, is the spiritual master, they are coming from Krishna directly. So we need to understand this. Our Guru or spiritual master, he is non-different from Krishna. He is representative of Krishna. So if we, if, if we instruct anything to our Guru, that means we are instructing to Krishna indirectly. And then we, become, we make so many offenses. We have seen so many stories in Bhagavatam where someone is instructed. So there is one example of Ramachandra Puri, which comes into Chaitanya Charita with. So Madhvendra Puri... Uh, uh, he is one of the greatest acharya in which sampradaya we are coming. So he was having two shishya. One is Ramachandra Puri and one is Ishwar Puri. So once Ramachandra Puri was uh, ch 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 chanting holy names and he was crying. And he was crying in separation of Krishna because he was saying, I was, I'm not able to get Krishna. And Ramachandra Puri was sitting next to Madhvendra Puri. So he thought like, why my guru is crying like this? And he started giving instruction to his guru. He said, why you are crying? You should not cry. You should remember Brahman and everything. So many instructions started giving. And he indirectly he was disturbing the consciousness or sadhana of his own Guru Madhvendra Puri. And Madhvendra Puri was already out of his humility and humbleness. He was like, he was crying for Lord. And then at the same time, this Ramchandra Puri was disturbing him. And then Madhvendra Puri got very much disturbed to him. And then due to as Guru got displeased with his shishya Ramchandra Puri and suddenly the fall down of Ramchandra Puri started. On the other side we see the another shishya of Madhvendra Puri is Ishwar Puri. So Ishwar Puri was the one who was cleaning even the stool of Madhvendra Puri and he was doing so much menial service of Madhvendra Puri and Madhvendra Puri being the guru of Ishwar Puri he got so much pleased that he gave so much blessings and then we can see that Ishwar Puri became guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is non-different than Radha and Krishna. So this is what it takes if we displease our Guru, if we order our Guru. So this is one of the most important thing in dealing with Vaishnava that is we should not disrespect our Guru. We should always try to take his mercy. We should always try to associate with Guru. If suppose we have Guru like with us, so we should not show him oh this is my wealth and this is what I am earning, this is what I am doing. No, actually we are nothing without Guru. Whatever today we are earning, whatever we are able to speak or whatever we are doing in bhakti or material life, 
is all due to mercy of our guru so we need to make sure that if we are dealing with our spiritual master those all dealing should be in very much proper consciousness otherwise our fall down is for sure and i ask uh, aradhita mata ji to read next prabhu Hare Krishna bro what exactly do you want me to share read yes so from here just like lord krishna just like lord shri krishna is non different than his name or picture similarly there is no difference between the spiritual master and his name and his picture hence one should keep pictures of guru and krishna at prop at proper place yeah you can continue one should not read books apart from those written by the guru and the parampara unless one has permission and blessings okay thank That, you yeah so should i continue yeah. oh you're done okay yeah so uh, these are like important points like uh, we keep so many different photos and everything but as we say like guru and krishna they are not different so we need to make sure that we should have picture of guru and krishna in our altar because whatever we are serving to krishna we cannot we are not that should or pure that we can serve krishna directly so whatever services we are doing whatever offerings we are doing last session we studied about offering honoring and serving prasadam so in that first thing is like we need to offer that to first krishna but we cannot directly offer anything to their lordships radha and krishna we need to go via parampara via guru so guru photo is required to be placed but we need to understand what is the correct order where photo should be placed it should not happen that guru's photo is above krishna because guru is representing krishna even though if we keep guru's photo above krishna then it's an often to guru guru takes that offense so we need to be very much precaution like i remember like whenever jayapataka swami maharaj he is not feeling well he just says like okay i am thinking my disciples they are not doing their sadhana properly so we need to very much sure that if suppose we are taking initiation if we are taking diksha and if we are not good in our sadhana then all those karma will go to our guru our guru need to face all those things so guru is one of the most important thing and in bhagavad gita there is very beautiful shlok in 4.34 which says like what is the quality of a disciple how he should inquire so it says like inquire submissively and render service unto him rather not to instruct him so this is most important like we need to inquire from him submissively we need to ask him okay guru what should i do even though if you think like okay i am more knowledgeable or i am more wealthy than a guru that is your fall down so we should never think that and we should always inquire every time that okay guru what should i do what is my duty and i am facing this issue so we should ask everything submissively not in a uh, like okay in a doubting mentality my guru is not aware of this and i should check with him whether he is aware of it no we should not do that because guru is highest in everything once after guru next comes the seniors so can i ask smita mata ji to read yes prabhu yeah. um... within a vaishnava tradition it is important expression of our humility to respect those who are in the senior position than ourselves in the chain of seniority the senior most vaishnava is the guru who is to be respected as a representative of god so he must be given the same respect as krishna himself next are the sanyasis among the sanyasis themselves senior seniority is considered on on the basis of who had taken sanyasa initi initiation earlier all sanyasis should be offered res should be offered respect full of uh, obeisances particularly when first sees them in a day next are the gurus and god brothers they should be respected as one respects the spiritual master 
Next are uh, Siksha Gurus and should be given equal respect. Devotee who have <clears throat> devotee who have gone through Brahma Diksha should be respected. Devotees who have accepted Diksha before us should be given due respect. Special respect must be given to the devotees who are senior in age. One should not instruct another person in the presence of a senior Vaishnava without receiving his permission. When key lamp is being offered to the devotees after Arti, seniority must be taken into an account. Yep. So we need to understand like few of the terms might be we are not aware. So the very first important person like in seniority is our guru who gives us diksha. Then other sannyas is now many of the people of devotee they don't like to know how to differentiate between a sannyasi or or a brahmachari. So sannyasi is the one if you want to see from the appearance perspective he's holding the danda and he's just tying the rope around his waist whereas brahmachari he tears proper dhoti where we see like grahastha also does. So sannyasis are the one who should be given respect. All sannyasis like whenever we see sannyasi we should give them our obeisance we should give them the not pranam to them. Then important is our god brothers our guru's god brother then is siksha guru so siksha guru is the one who is giving us knowledge every time now it is not possible that we are always associating with our spiritual master or diksha guru so siksha gurus are the one who are giving us all knowledge every time they are us they are the one who takes us to diksha guru they are the one who is giving who are teaching you everything starting from deity worship they teaches us how to read shastra how to mesmerize shloka how to do kirtan, everything. So each and everything is done by your Shiksha Guru. It is possible for few fortunate souls that your Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru are the one, but it's very rare because the Sannyasis or Diksha Guru, they are always going everywhere around the globe to spread the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Shiksha Gurus should be respected a lot because from them only we learn. Then the one Brahman Diksha. So there is level of Diksha. So first initially we take Diksha after following certain rules and regulations. And after that, when we do certain set of courses, Bhakti Shastri or Bhakti Vaibhav, then we get Brahman Diksha where we get a thread. And so they should be given respect. And after that, the, the one who have taken Diksha. Now in this, we might see like some other that, uh, people or devotees who are senior in age, they might not be Brahman initiated or they might not be initiated also, but as they are senior in age, so it's general practice that we should give them equal respect because they are senior in our age. And similarly, whenever, like we see every Sunday when we come to center, when Aarti is going on, so we are different paraphernalia, like Aarti is there, then we have uh, 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 flowers are there, then we have water is there. So after RP, that should be first given to seniors. For example, if we have any Srila Prabhupada disciples, then it should be given to them. Then it should go to temple president and then it should go to rest of the devotees. So that order should be followed as part of etiquette. And as Ashish Prabhu, you read next. Yes, Prabhu. God brothers should call one another Prabhu. One should not try to become a Prabhu because we are so being addressed. One should simply remain the servant and accept other as Prabhu. We should serve all according to the particular level. From our seniors, we should inquire submissively, carry out their instruction and aspire to be their obedient servant. To those who are equal, we should serve them by be friending them, assisting them, and encouraging them. To those who are junior to us, we should serve them by guiding them, directing them, encouraging them, and enlightening them. When we meet other, when we meet another God brother, we should bow down and offer the prayer. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Vaishnava devotee of the Lord. They are just like a desire tree and can fulfill the desire of everyone. And they are full of compassion for the fallen conditioned souls. Yeah. yeah. 
So this is very important to understand. Here we see the first and is Prabhu. So what is Prabhu? So Prabhu is nothing but a master. So to whom we can take shelter of. Now, whenever we come to center or whenever we are associating with the devotee, we should every time call each other with Prabhu or Mataji. But if someone is calling us Prabhu, we should not feel ego. Oh, he is calling me Prabhu. I am now. I am become Prabhu. No. So why we call them Prabhu? So in Chaitanya Chaitamita, and Shri Prabhupada has written many letters on this, and he says we call someone Prabhu because we feel that we are lower than the other person. If you are not calling someone else Prabhu or someone else as Mataji, that means we feel ourselves as superior than that particular devotee, and then. The whole conscious, like we see, like we should be humble than the blade of the grass. Then we are not humble because we we are calling them with their name, not with Prabhu or Mataji. So this is most important. And then we have so many senior devotees, senior guests are coming. So that is one of the most important opportunity where we can inquire from them. To our equals, we can have them friend relationship. We can assist, help, and each other. Those who are junior to us in spirituality, we should always guide them, guide them. We should always direct them, so we can see how this is different from material world. So in material world, who are our seniors? We are always jealous, like oh, why he has done so much? Why he is earning so much? Why he has become VP or director? Then who are similar to us? Then we always try to co compete the, uh, with them. That okay, uh, he should not do this. I should get promotion. He should not. He should be at that same level. And those who are junior to us in material world, we always try to dominate them. But in spirituality, when you see a real devotee is the one who is always inquiring to senior, who is always helping each other who are equal to us in a friendly way, and he's always directing the juniors. So this is most important. And then we discuss this. Whenever we see any devotee, we should bow down and recite this prayer. So this is very important. We should all learn this particular prayer and whenever we see it's not like if we see someone on the road we should bow down and then sing a prayer no it's not important according to time place and circumstances we we need to recite this whenever we see any devotee can i ask dhananji krishna about this yes prabhu no i'm thinking Dealing with God brothers, we should never accept a God brother as servant servants unless we have the permission or order of one of spiritual master. We must never allow the saying familiarity breeds contempt to enter into the relationship between the devotees. Dealing between devotees should be respectful and without offense and depreciate duplicitousness. Devotees must not address one another by their karmi names. One should not praise oneself or boast one's achievement or qualification to the other devotees. One should know that actually one has no qualifications. Whatever we are able to do is simply due to the mercy of Guru and the Vaishnavas. If a god brother or a god sister is undergoing some difficulties on account of sickness or bereavement in the family and or is in emotional turmoil due to some reason, one must help in word and deed. A friend in need is a friend indeed. The bonds between the devotees will be tested at the time of difficulty. We cannot ignore such development as being material. So, yeah, this is important. Like sometimes it happens like senior devotees to us, they might make some jokes just for time being. So we should not be like very much familiar in that particular sense and then we should keep our hands on the shoulder of senior devotee and start speaking like a friend. No, 
senior devotees speaking something or doing some jokes to us that means okay we need to accept that but we should not have that particular friendly thing immediately with them like what we are with in a material world how, like how we speak with the friends so we should make sure that we are always respectful to all the seniors and when how we can do that when we feel ourselves as lower when we feel okay i am servant of each and every soul and we need to understand that whatever we are doing it's only due to mercy of all the vaishnavas nothing can be done and we we uh, if suppose some devotees are not well or they are sick and if they need some help we should try to do as much as possible to them uh, to them we should not say oh prabhu no class mein bataya hai we are not this body we are soul to theek hai aapko bukhar ho gaya rehne do prabhu you stay at home ek din jana hi hai so krishna will take you up no we should not do this the reason we need devotees because with devotees only we are able to go back to krishna if we have association of devotees then only will be able to survive otherwise if propad has not come to us we are not speaking on this topic today it's all due to propad acharyas and devotees association so devotee association is one of the most important factor we might talk to different devotees as a usual but when devotees are in trouble so we should be first to help them to serve them that is our real test whether we are really considering ourselves as servant and whether we are really we, we we can easily call them prabhu or mata ji but then when actually we try to implement that that is the time when that prabhu or mata ji is in difficulty and we are helping them or we are trying to serve them that will be our real test shiva prabhu dealing with god brothers if a devotee has strayed away from the devotional service and has not been in the association of devotees for a considerable period he or she must not be chastised for being in maya or reprimanded in a way that will push him or her further away from the lotus feet of spiritual master if someone comes after a while due to some reason then we should not make fun of them in front of others one must offer love encouragement and friendship and make him or her feel once again at home in the company of the devotees so it happens like we have seen few of the devotees that due to some their personal issues or personal reason they are not able to make to temple or Uh, different programs so sometimes it happens that they they might not share with us their what is going on in their personal life but whenever they come we should be so much joyful to seeing them oh prabhu you are back oh mata ji you are back we are missing your association we shouldn't be like oh prabhu kaha chale gaye the bas aap aa gaye aap se festival pe aate no we are not aware what is their situation and then this krishna conscious movement proper says this is movement where we are trying everyone to go and help each other to go back to god here krishna so we should not make fun of any of the devotee in front of anyone else because then it is one kind of offense and we are not feeling ourselves as servants so this is most important point that whosoever is coming to the center whosoever coming to our house we should never make their fun or we should always try to encourage them in krishna consciousness sumitra dealing with ladies treating women as mothers a woman must be given all the respect and particularly if she is vaishnavi a brahmachari should see every woman as his mother and grahastha should see every woman except his wife as his mother brahmachari should associate with mata ji only so far as required to execute devotional services and no more in mentorship prabhu ji can seek guidance from prabhu ji and grahastha on or grahastha and mata ji from mata ji or grahastha women should behave as mother becoming krishna conscious means rising above duality we have to become we have to become fixed in the consciousness 
that all are part and parcel of Krishna and for his pleasure, not ours. Mm. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada, in one of his commentary in Chaitanya Chaitamit, he says that this duality, like you are a girl or a boy, or he is this and he is that, this is what we have made distinguished. But actually, when we see, we are all soul. So, we should never uh, discriminate anyone. And especially when it comes to deal with Matajis or ladies, uh, and when they are following Krishna conscious practice, so they are very higher, we should not consider, okay, she's a lady or she's a Mataji, so she should, she cannot do this or that. No, they can play equal role in Krishna conscious movement. We can see there are so many senior uh, Matajis in our movement, Yamuna Mataji, Malti Mataji, they are doing so much, contributing so much for Srila Prabhupada. So we should treat them like our mother. And mother, like when, when we say treat them like a mother, like that means we need to give them respect, proper respect. That is most important etiquette for any one of us. Like whenever we see any Mataji in center, we should treat them properly. We should not have any uh, negative intentions for anyone. And then because if we have anything bad in our mind, that will contaminate our consciousness. We know the example of Raja Mil and so many stories. We know on the other side, Haridas Thakur, he was so much focused on his sadhana. So whenever we see someone or we meet with some Mataji, we should consider them as our mother. At the same time, the Matajis, they should all also be behaving like a mother to each and everyone. And then they should be contributing that love for everyone. Vijay Prabhu. Yes, Prabhuji, do I need to read? Yeah. The whole thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Maya's most attractive feature is women and money. We Krishna conscious men have to deal with women and money in course of preaching work. And the only prophylactic measure to save us is not to accept them for our sense gratification. Then we shall remain strong enough. Materialistic people take everything for sense gratification and Krishna conscious people take everything for Krishna's satisfaction. There is no fault in the thing as it is, namely women and money, but it becomes faulty by improper use. The improper use is to accept them for sense gratification. Srila Prabhupada letter to Gargamuni. When we when we advise that women should be seen as mothers, we mean that our dealings with women should be reserved and respectful. Same applies to Matajis, where they should give respect to all other Matajis, Prabhujis. Yeah, so this is where Srila Prabhupada wrote one letter to Gargamuni Prabhu, and then he's describing that money and this both are important because a, a Grahastha Prabhu, if he's good in bhakti, that means his wife or that Mataji is supporting him very well by cooking, by serving nice prasadam. So both are playing equal and important role. So both sides should give equal respect to each other. It should not happen that Prabhuji is not respecting Mataji or Mataji is not respecting on the other way. Everyone should be treated equally with all respect. Next is important thing. Now we have seen like how to deal with... Uh, our spiritual master with senior our god brothers now is like how to deal with a guest now these guests are uh one who are coming first time to the center first time to your house we are inviting them to the program so this is basically this particular guest uh can i request gora prabhu dealing with guests when guests come to our temple or home it is the Vaishnav etiquette to treat them with great respect and love. They should be welcomed with sweet words, a seat, water, and prasadam according to our means. Any guest who visit our Srila Prabhupada's guest, as his servants, it is our pleasure and duty to serve them. The arrival of a guest is a chance to introduce a conditioned soul 
to Srila Prabhupada or Relish Vaishnava Association. Vaishnava feel joy and gratitude to be blessed with such an opportunity. If someone new comes to center, then we should leave our place and guide them and welcome them. Dealing with others. We may offer respect to, but one should not associate with the following categories. Vaishnavas of bad or doubtful character. Sahajiyas, Mayavadis, Sanyasis. Yeah. So yeah, so these are the people who are coming first time to our home or center. So you suppose Kirtan or Samarthi is going on and if we see someone is coming first time and then they are a bit hesitant because one side Matajis are dancing, one side Prabhujis are dancing and doing Kirtan. So they don't know like what to do. So we should go. We should, whatever we are doing, we should, whether if we are hearing the Bhag, uh, Bhagavatam class or if we are dancing or whatever activity we are doing, we should try to go and then welcome them, ask them like where they can sit because Initially, I've seen like many of the new people, they get confused where to sit because outside world, apart from Iskand, they're not aware, okay, Mata is at one side and Prabhu is at one side. So we should try to welcome them because any particular person who is coming to our movement is not our guest. It's, he is Srila Prabhupada's guest because this center is not ours. This is Srila Prabhupada's center. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu center. So we should always think that, oh, we are not inviting to our place because nothing is ours basically. So this is all a uh, Lord's property. So if anyone is coming, this is all due to mercy of uh, seniors and uh, Krishna. So th that is important to follow. That is general etiquette. If someone is coming, we should escort them. And then there there might be a few other uh, uh, guests, like they are always in arguing mode or they are Mayava, these people outside. So this is altogether very vast topic. But when we we should not try to associate with such people, but if suppose some Mayavadi, we can see in Chaitanya Chaitanya, there are many Mayavadis where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu converted them from Mayavadi to Vaishnava. So if someone is really uh, listening to you or seeking help to come to or understand the Vaishnava philosophy, so to them we can give the guidance, but we should not associate and pollute our consciousness. So that is important to understand here. Next is addressing Vaishnava. Now, we many of the people when they come, they say, Oh, what is this? Uh, why in Srila Prabhupada we say his divan grace and what are different upadis? Like we in office we have Mr. or Miss something like this. So for Srila Prabhupada, we always address him his divine grace, AC Bhakti Dan Swami Srila Prabhupada. Now it might be a question like why his divine grace? So divine is the supreme, and to get that grace. Or to get that grace is nothing but a krupa. So if someone needs krupa, chahiye, we need some gateway, some medium to get that gateway. So Srila Prabhupada, he is a pure devotee. He is Acharya who has got that mercy from Krishna. And then we need same mercy from Srila Prabhupada. That is it becomes his divine grace. So via Srila Prabhupada, we are getting mercy of Krishna. So that becomes his divine grace. So for our Acharya, we always say his divine grace. Sannyasis, we write His Holiness because uh, they are the one who are uh, going all over the globe and they are most popular because they are spreading this movement. For all other, uh, our God brothers and seniors, we write His Grace or Her Grace. Uh, we can also add Sriman in uh, front of them. For Brahmacharis, mostly uh, we add a suffix as Brahmachari. So for example, we have someone who is named as Krishna Das or Brahmachari, then we can say Krishna Das Brahmachari. Uh, one point that is important, like many times we see, like whenever any sannyasis comes to our center and then if there is question answer session or if we want to meet them, we call them Prabhu. So it's not correct. We should not call any of the sannyasis as Prabhu. We should always call them Maharaj. So like for example, Jepataka Swami Maharaj, Lokna Swami Maharaj, like this, we should always name with Maharaj or Swami, not with Prabhu. So we need to make sure that we are aware like to what to call uh, to each of respected devotees. Now next is very important point. Now we have seen till now that Guru is important. Then we have seen how to deal with the guest. Now next comes like how to see a Vaishnava. So uh, can I ask Jyoti Mataji to read? Sandali Mataji.
Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Give me one second. Yeah. Dealing with different kind of devotees. Vaishnavas not to be seen from material point of view. Sri Rupa Goswami says in the nectar of instruction in uh, regards to the Vaishnava. Such a devotee should not be seen from the materialistic point of view. Indeed, um, one should overlook the devotees having a body. Sorry, Prabhu, I'm reading from phone, so it's a little slow. Yeah. <laughs> Born in the low family, a body with a head com bad complexions, a deformed body, or a decrease this. Diseased. Oh, disease for or uh, informed body. Mm. Sorry about that. Um, in the other world, one should overlook the bodily defect of the bad appearances, low birth, low uh, education, etc. Any Vaishnava serving the Lord should be considered holy. It is uh, stated in the Sastras that it it is the hellish mentality to consider a Vaishnava to be a born of a, a certain caste or creed or to consider the same to be an ordinary person. Body of the Vaishnava is to be seen as, as a temple of the Vishnu. Therefore, while offering obeisances to Vaishnava, we should remember that we are also offering an obeisances to Lord Vishnu within the heart. Therefore, we should never walk over the body of the Vaishnava. Yeah, thank you, Mother. Yeah, you, so this is very important. Like uh, sometimes we see uh, some devotees from their uh, external factors, like from their bodily factors or from their well perspective, something. So it should not happen. No, that devotee is very wealthy. Let's go into their home program and then other devotee, he is no, he is not that wealthy. We can avoid going to that program. No. So as we are aware, the basic concept of our movement, the basic teachings is like we are not this body, we are soul. So whether one is rich or poor, whether one is very uh, like outside, like from bodily perspective, they have some uh, defects or something. We should not consider anything from devotee perspective. So if we know the Srila Prabhupada's guru, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sasti Thakur, he was so much scholar learned that whenever he was speaking anything, like people need to refer dictionary. And his guru, Gaur Kishas Babaji, he was, he never went to school also. He was not able to do read anything, but he was so much scholar from spiritual spirituality perspective that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sri Thakur, he was repeatedly asking Gaur Kishas Babaji to accept him as his disciple. But every time Gaur Kishas Babaji was saying that, I don't know anything. I don't have any qualification. Why you are coming to me? And it was going multiple times, almost 7 to 18 times. And then at last, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sri Thakur tells Gaur Kishas Babaji that if you are not giving me Diksha, then there is no use of me. I will leave my body. And at that particular time, Srila Gaur Kishas Babaji initiates Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sri Thakur. So this shows like we should not see a Vaishnava with their outside bodily factor. So whenever we are, like Srila Prabhupada says, Wherever this chanting is going on, wherever there is Katha, Hari Katha is going on, there, there are chances like there are de demigods which are coming there and sitting next to us. So if we consider any devotee from their body defects or some perspective, then we might create an offense and then we, we may downfall. So that is very much important to not differentiate between devotees. This devotee, that devotee, that should not happen and we should give equal respects to each and every one. And that is the thing, like we should not, if, if suppose by mistake we touch, by our feet we touch some devotee, we should beg forgiveness and then we should, like, karte hai ki, if we touch someone, we, we say sorry to them. So that is, that should be there because in everyone's heart, Paramatma is sitting. So if we touch any devotee or any Vaishnava, that means we are touching or stepping on Lord himself. So we should be very much cautious when we deal with 
devotees and we should not look them from material angle and and then it is stated in many of the uh, our scriptures that uh, whenever you start anything whenever you do anything so only that is possible due to mercy of a vaishnava as we seen in first few slides like without mercy of a guru without spiritual master we are nothing so similarly without spiritual master shiksha guru or without vaishnava we cannot do anything so it is always recommended that whenever we start any activity whenever we start a new business or whenever we uh, purchase anything something so we should always seek blessings and we should invite vaishnavas and we should seek their blessings because if we seek blessings from vaishnava then it is for sure that krishna will bestow his cause this mercy on us and then whatever thing we are uh, going to start will be having great success because we have taken uh, blessings from uh, krishna's devotee now next is uh, what are the different loving actions between vaishnavas can i ask gopal going to read this <clears throat> loving exchanges between the Vaishnavas. Srila Rupa Goswami explains in the Nectar of Instruction that there are six loving exchanges between the Vaishnavas offering gifts in charity, receiving gifts in charity, revealing one's mind in confidence, inquiring confidentially. Accepting prashadam, offering prashadam. When one comes to the temple, one should accept prashadam from the Vaishnavas. For Grahastha, it is their duty to invite the Vaishnavas to their home to offer prashadam. The most precious gift we can give or receive is the gift of Krishna Katha, the transcendental. Knowledge of Krishna Consciousness. Krishna staying outside the temple should try to call devotees to renounce, sorry, uh, should try to call devotees of renounced order for preaching at their homes. Krishna. Yes, yeah, so this is, yeah, this is one of the most important thing, like how we should uh, share something with a devotee. Uh, like once uh, I was hearing like one devotee was there and then he was very uh, frustrated in his life and then he was very much well connected with some other devotee and then he shared everything what is going in his personal life and it so happened that when he shared now this other devotee started sharing his personal thing this devotee person to everyone else and then, then this devotee was so much frustrated that he Stop, stopped coming to the center, stopped coming to the temple. And even sometime later, he stopped doing his chanting and everything. So the third point, like revealing one's mind in confidence, that is very important. Sometimes it happens like few of the devotees, they are very closely connected and then they reveal their heart, they reveal their problems, their issues. So we should not uh, like take all this personal discussion or confidentiality to or share with other. Yes, it is important to share with your authority that, okay, I have heard from this particular, this, this, this. But then we should not, like we should not make fun of these things in front of that devotee or share with someone because then that confidentiality will not be there. And then that devotee will lose trust on anyone else. And then he will leave Krishna consciousness. So that will be a biggest surprise. So that should not happen. Gifts and everything is okay that we can give give and take gifts. But um, the most important thing, like if we are inviting like Grahastha who are uh, performing bhakti at, at home, they should always try to invite the devotees at home. Not to like discuss any material thing or mundane thing or to just, okay, Prabhuji, please come at home. Let's uh, play something and let's go for a movie. No, that should not happen. The main motive... If we are calling any devotee at home, that should be to spread the message of Shaitanya Mahaprabhu, to discuss about Krishna Katha, to sing glories of devotees, to sing glories of Krishna's pastime. So that is one of the most important things. When when I was in Singapore, in, now on from Sunday, Kartik month is starting. So every day, like devotees are calling each another for 
Damodar Katha. So same Damodar Katha is going like 30 days at some devotee's place. Same Katha, there is no difference. But there is a different joy because this whole month is very dear to Srimati Radharani and Krishna himself. So that is very important. If you are calling someone at home, then our main purpose is to spread the message of Krishna consciousness, to preach that message. We should invite new people, those who are our neighbors, we can invite them and then we can invite some devotees and then that devotee can give a particular talk and then that is how we can uh, take more people to Krishna consciousness. Now, we have seen like how to uh, deal with the devotees now. There, there are different like people, they are non-devotees, those who are not aware of Krishna consciousness and how to deal with them. Uh, can I request uh, Pankaj Prabhu to read this? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. One should not allow non-devotee to touch our fruit, but if they insist and there is no such there is no such other way to avoid it, then one can simply remember the predecessor, Acharya Sand, spiritual master, and accept them and return the namaskara with folded hands. Two categories of non-devotees. To the innocent, we should be well-wisher. With respect, we should enlighten them and give them association of spiritual master. But we should not take their association by engaging in activities that give them pleasure in life that is in materialistic activities. As regards the atheist, we should avoid them. It is an offense against the holy name to preach such people. We may, however, preach if they are willing to submissively hear from us. Greeting non-devotees. If he is a friend, we can say Hare Krishna with folded hands. If he is superior relative, then we should chant Hare Krishna and bow down to him or her. If one encounters a person who is criticizing Guru, Vaishnavas or Shastra, then one, then one most soundly defeat him in argument or leave the place immediately. Mm -hmm. Hearing such offenses is one of the greatest obstacles to one's spiritual development. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, so uh, we have seen like we might uh, get in contact with non-devotees, those who are not aware of uh, Bhakti at all. So when I came uh, to US initially and we went to office, so everyone was like, okay, what do you on weekend? And then it was like, oh, you should, you are new to US, you should go to New York, you should go to this club and this pub. And then they, they started laughing, okay, why you are doing all this? This is not your age. So similarly, this happens to each of us. Like when we start our Krishna consciousness, people start speaking like, Sorry, tu pandit ho gaya. So at this particular time, we should not get angry on them because once upon a time, we are also at the same stage. But now we have understood, okay, what is Krishna consciousness? What, what is our existence? Who we are and everything. So we should be always, Prabhupada always writes, you are well-wisher. So we always try to help even to a non-devotees by helping them or giving them basic knowledge. Okay, what is Shastra? What is Krishna consciousness like this? There are chances like there someone might argue with you. Oh, this is not why we can eat meat. If you don't eat meat, then there will be like uh, there are so many animals will be there. Something like unnecessary arguments will be there in market. So we should try to speak with them uh, not in arguing mode or not in angry mode because if we are angry or if we are like arguing like anything that that shows we are not having all qualities of a devotee but we should try to explain them from shastric example we should hear and that is the reason our reading hearing and chanting is one of the most important thing if we chant more if we hear more if we read more that means we are able to understand our philosophy more and then we, sh we were, will be able to defeat or we will be able to convince instead of defeating the most important thing is that we should be able to convince the people okay our motto should not be like to defeat each and everyone our motto should be like okay how i can best convince or how best i can present Srila Prabhupada's philosophy to that particular non-devotee person we can be we, we can pray to guru we can pray to krishna 
So before we speak to anyone, we can in mentally we can pray to our Guru and Krishna that Krishna, please help me. Guru, please help me. I am I don't know anything, but if you bestow your mercy, then something can be uh, like some something I, I can be able to speak something to this particular person, this, to this particular soul. And then if you meet any of your relatives, uh, mostly in relatives, it happens that they always start like why it is required. And then they always have scarcity. Oh, now he is gone to Hare Krishna's. He will become Brahmachari. He will not come back. So, so many arguments are there. But then we should not disrespect them also because Krishna is sitting in their heart also. Paramatma is there in everyone's heart. So we should always say Hare Krishna. And then uh, we should not fight with them. And then if suppose we are in the environment where someone is trying to criticize our guru someone is trying to criticize our shastra there are different scriptures as there bhagavatam gita chaitanya any shastras then we should try to uh, 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 defeat them in the argument so we can see in chaitanya chaitanya and our acharyas they defeated like anything to so many scholars shila bhakti sarant thakur defeated so many scholars who were like so-called scholars at that particular time, they were saying like, oh, we are Brahmana, we are so much pure and this. But Chaitan Shila Bhaktan Thakur was able to defeat them very easily. So we should first try to uh, defeat them. If that is not possible for us, then we should not at least hear those offenses to our Guru and Shastras. Because if we hear those offenses, that means we are also making an offense in our Chaitana, our uh, uh, we will be uh, like contaminated then we will not be able to concentrate on our bhakti uh, Ramsa Prabhu should we continue because we are almost more 8 slides now and it's almost 9.30 uh, We can, I think we can take one more uh, important slide, we think, uh, whatever we do, and we can take you away. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, next is reception of guest. So, uh, can I request uh, Jagdish Prabhu? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Reception of guest, Achiti Seva. The Sanskrit word atiti means not scheduled. Lord test devotee and see how ready he is to serve him in any situation. The Lord temple, whether open or public or in one's home, should be placed where visitors can take part in temple activities as far as possible. This can is preaching moment, so proper reception of guest is very important. As proper reception of guest can make the difference between a person coming once to the temple and never returning or becoming a regular visitor and ultimately becoming a devotee of Krishna. They should be treated in such a way that they will feel comfortable and want to come again. Temple resident and especially one who received deities should be expert in receiving guests. Any opulent worship will fail to attract a guest if the temple resident neglect them. If Grastak does not receive the unexpected guest warmly, no matter who he is, he commits great sin. Every Varna should receive guest properly. Yeah, so this is important point. Like as we see, the Atiti is nothing but the one who is like. If suppose someone comes to you and you are not aware of that, that becomes your atiti, that becomes your guest. Now, this guest is not a Vaishnava guest. So, in this whole Vaishnava ticket, they are divided into two different parts. One is guest who are non-devotees and one is Vaishnava who falls in devotee culture. So, and it is mentioned like both for like a guest who is non-devotee or a Vaishnava who is a devotee. A devotee should must be ready every time to receive anyone at our home, even to the demons, even like if suppose we are not good with someone, if if our relations are not good, even to them, we should be always ready to welcome because 
we should think that that particular person who has come to me is having super soul within his heart and we are not aware like anytime lord might come into any other in any form and then he can test us so we should never disrespect anyone who is coming to our home and then as propad has uh, made this incorporate this movement is gone uh, for preaching movement to take people closer to krishna so and and as it is said like first impression is last impression so any guest who is coming to our house or in a, in our center we should treat them so nicely that they should come again and again it should not happen that we are treating them not like nicely or they are we are not helping them in a, at our home if you are not giving them proper uh, facilities at our home then they will not come again and then we will lose one soul to to take mm-hmm. them to shila oh. prabhupada krishna consciousness so that is most important that we should follow this so if we do whatever appellant our home mm-hmm. will be our center will mm-hmm. be so if however appellant our home or center will be how, how much decoration we do but if we are not able to receive anyone because these guests are not our guests as i said earlier these guests are shila prabhupas guests this guest are shri chaitanya mahaprabhu's guest so it is not we have asked them to come it's what chaitanya mahaprabhu has seeded that beach or given them sukriti okay now you can go and take darshan so shila bhakti san thakur says like whenever anyone or even devotees we should not go in the temple to see the lord or to see the deities we sh- we should do so much menial services that lord should call us and lord wants to see us so this should be our motto so if suppose someone is coming it means that they have done something pious and lord wants to see them and lord is calling them is their home center is not our home center is lord's home so we need to receive each and every guest with very proper motive if it's it may be center it may be our home we should every time appreciate any incoming guest we should not feel oh, this he came why he came we are doing this we are going outside no we should always very warmly receive all the guest if you are not able to receive any guest warmly then we commit sins we have seen so many ekadashi stories where it is said like uh, whosoever has done any sins if they see any rushi muni they provide their dandot pranam and then rushi muni and then uh, uh, like they, they receive this rushi muni very properly and then that rushi muni guides them and then they get a uh, like benefit out of that so this is very important that we should receive any guest whether devotee or non devotee very properly at our home or our center now uh, the next thing is like the main element in receiving guest are the offering of proper respect and convenience so we should give them like as soon as we see any guest we should offer them water a place to sit we can ask them uh, like if they want to rest for some time we we should give them prasadam as per our capacity and then uh, as soon as guest is we should not inquire oh, when you are leaving no that is not correct attitude like as soon as there are we are asking them ki kab ja rahe ho no we should not we should make such arrangement that they should feel to stay longer with us so that is important uh, it is good like if we exchange some uh, sweets or gold or money something based upon our relation and based upon our capacity we should do that uh, if any elders or anyone is coming to us so uh, we should immediately rise and ask them to give first seat so in center also it's possible like if suppose some elderly person is there and then if we are taking pressure or something and then it's but, but obvious that he cannot sit on the floor to take pressure them so we should offer them uh, first a seat on the table and then take prasadam so uh, krishna consciousness is like lot of opportunities there we say but this is not an opportunity this is an opportunity so austerity becomes an opportunity for us to serve someone to serve krishna and serve his devotees okay i think so uh, we might need to stop because there are m- multiple topics after this aram uh, tulsi bro is that okay sure sure yeah, we can stop here we can take question and answer if any devotees are Yes, sir. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Uh, I have three questions uh, from three different slides. Yeah. Uh, the first question is from the slide uh, where we were mentioning that uh, 
uh, how should we treat Matajis? Uh, there you mentioned that uh, we should treat them with respect and we should be reserved. What do you mean by reserved there? Uh, so, that's... yeah. Yeah, so I will answer first the true. So, uh, respect and reserve in the sense like uh, we should not uh, consider them for any of our sense gratification. Uh, we should be restricting ourselves with our limitations to uh, when dealing. So whatever work we have, suppose if if you want to speak to any matters for any seva, for example, for garland making seva, so our talk should be reserved. That means we should only discuss about that particular seva. We should not start discussing anything else apart from that. Whatever seva we have, only that particular thing should be discussed. Okay. Uh, the second question is from the like exchanging, I think, gifts and all. Uh, so we mentioned mm -hmm. the term gifts in charity. Uh, what do we mean by charity there? So charity, like anything, Prabhu, if you want to give some uh, gifts, like, uh, for example, some money or some gold or something, that becomes a charity in that particular thing. So mm -hmm. Rupa Goswami has stated like there are six different exchanges between devotee. So anything as a gift is also, it, it means in as a charity to them okay and one last question uh we are like as we mentioned you know a couple of times that you know we should treat uh, each other with respect and all and now we are saying that if some non he was who is non-devotee is touching the feet then we should not allow them isn't touching the feet is kind of showing respect and then we are allowing not allowing them to show respect so uh, yeah said, so whenever anyone touches anyone's feet that means if suppose I am touching your feet, that means I am giving my karma to you. So if I have any bad karma, that karma will go to you. So in Vaishnava philosophy, basically, we that's the reason we give dandavat to each other. That we uh, we give pranam to we say Hare Krishna and we like our five limbs of the body to Vaishnava. We touch on the floor and we give dandavat to that. To seniors is okay, but for outsiders, like we are not aware what is their conscious and what, what they have done. So if someone is touching, that means we are taking their karma to us. So we are not touching because when they touch our feet, that means because Krishna as a Paramatma is sitting in their heart also. So when they are touching, that means it becomes aparad in other way for us also. Because uh, as, as we said, like we should not touch by our feet to anyone. And someone touching our feet is one and the same in, in one respect. Because if we touch anyone's body uh, by our feet, that means we are uh, like uh, touching the feet on, on the Lord. So similarly, if someone is touching our feet, that means super soul is sitting, residing within their heart. So we should not. Yes, it's, it's allowed to touch the feet of the seniors and spiritual master because spirit, when we accept any spiritual master when we take diksha then he takes all our karma so that is allowed but for mostly for outside it is not recommended but even though if that situation is unavoidable then we can uh, remember our acharyas because if suppose someone is touching our feet then there are high chances that we become or we develop an ego that oh see i'm so qualified i'm so learned now people are touching my feet and that will increase your senses that will that will distract your consciousness or that will impact your bhakti so we don't know maya can attack us in any other form so the best practice is that if that is unavoidable that okay that person might touch then but we should give that uh, mentally we should uh, beg forgiveness from our seniors and then uh, we should pray for that particular person Okay, thank you, Professor. There's Hare Krishna. There's one question in the chat. Yeah. Um, how shall we deal with any atheist who is in a group, part of which are devotees, and it is an open class? So, how do we deal with atheists who are part of with who are with groups of devotees, and it is an open class? Yeah, so uh, as we said, like atheist, there are two kind of people. One who is like uh, accepting bhakti, or one who is like uh, okay with the uh, bhakti part. But on the other side, if suppose some atheist is there, and if class is going on, then I remember one of the class where uh, Sheila Prabhupada was sitting, and one of the 
uh, Atis and Mayavadi group came. So as soon as that group came, Srila Prabhupada um, asked all his disciples to start loudly chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra so that they can they will not have any chance. Atheists will not have any chance. But it, it varies upon situation to situation. So to this atheist, they might argue in first, but we should pray to Guru and Krishna that okay, this soul is suffering somehow. He is not able to understand the purpose of life. By hearing one time name of Krishna in the class or glories of Krishna and his devotees, we should pray Krishna that this atheist should able to understand the philosophy. Now, it's on Krishna whether uh, what should happen to this particular atheist. If he is able to understand, then we should guide him more. But if he is not accepting and if he is starting arguing, then slowly we should uh, try to avoid the association. But initially, first we should try to associate, uh, give them, give him or her guidance on from philosophical perspective that uh, what is written in Shastra with proper justification and proper references. Uh, like there are few atheists, they speak more or from the science perspective. So we have many Sanyasi Shravrupa disciples, Satsur Das Gosai Maharaj, like he has written all his books from scientific perspective, proving like how Krishna's Supreme Positive Godhead. So we can read those books and give references from that. And even after that, he is not able to accept. Then the only thing is like we should not associate the basic thing across this particular atheist is that we should not take what they are saying because that will contaminate our uh, sadhana or our mind. So we should not associate them. Rather, we should give association of devotees. If you are not able to answer them, then we can take them to seniors uh, and then uh, ask, seek their guidance and then seniors might help to uh, tackle the question which this atheist is having. Hare Krishna. Krishna, maybe we can take one more last question, if anyone has. Okay, thank you once again, Prabhuji Namarikana Prabhu, for giving us a very enlightening session on the different ways we should deal with different devotees. Um, this, is, this is something that is... Uh, very much needed for many devotees. And also to be reminded is something that's very important because many times we get complacent, we take it for granted, we forget. So for our own sadhana, for our own respect and compassion compassion towards devotees and non-devotees, um, hearing this again was, is something that's, is, it, it was very important for us. So thank you once again. Um, before logging off, I'll just quickly make some last minute announcements. If everybody can just hold on for two minutes. Um, yeah. So for those of you who are joining first time, welcome to our Iskana of Bergen County Wednesday Sangha Forum. Um, this is our website, beautiful pictures we have here. Um, today's uh, Wednesday Sangha was given by His Grace Nimai Krana Prabhu. Um, and Prabhuji will also be giving um, the Sunday Feast lecture this coming Sunday on Bhagavad Gita 14.27. So please be sure to attend and uh, don't miss that one. Um, if you're not plugged into one of our weekly Bhakti Riksha house programs, we recommend you to please reach out to one of us, um, either Ram Sosi Prabhu, or Ram Chandra Prabhu, or Gopal Govind Prabhu. We can plug you in uh, depending on your locality. Um, this happens 7.30 onwards every Friday. Um, and... Uh, to, since today's Ekadashi, tomorrow the fast breaking time is from 7.19 a.m. to 10.53 a.m. I'll repeat, 7.19 to 10.53 a.m. tomorrow is the fast breaking time. Um, so make sure, uh, devotees, please break your fast between that time, not after or not before. Um, and also, one, I, uh, one announcement for all the Prabhus is that this Saturday is Men Sangha. Um, the venue is at um, Gaurav Prabhu's house. So uh, please uh, make yourself available and please feel free to come and join us for a fun-filled day. Okay. Hare Krishna. So with that, we'd like to conclude today's session for uh, today. Thank you once again, Nimai Prabhu.
for giving us your time and speaking on such a wonderful and important topic. Hare Krishna. Let's all thank the Krona Prabhu with a loud Haribo. 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 Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you.